morning. Thank you guys all for being here today. My name is Courtney Martin. I am a Generation 14 student here at IRE, so I'm a junior in my second semester. So last night, I went home after the career fair, and I'm sitting there chopping up some serrano for my guacamole that I'm about to eat. Super excited for it. And my significant other comes home, and we're talking about each other's day. And I'm telling him about mine, and he's telling me about his. And I start to really reflect, and I'm thinking about my takeaways for the day. And I had two major takeaways from yesterday. Number one is, wow, did that feel good to be involved in such a wonderful community who um, is full of students that are empowering, intelligent, professional, and technical. I had a great day yesterday because I was supported by all of my peers. Also, I felt really happy. I was just cutting up some vegetables and I felt so happy and I'm like, okay, so I feel super successful today and I feel super happy. Like, what, what is, has caused this? And so I think, oh, I know what caused this. The subject of my IRE talk. Although there are a lot of factors that cause success and happiness, self-discipline is one of the most important factors of that. So what is self-discipline? Well, there's lots of different definitions, but overall, self-discipline is the ability to tap in mentally and have self-awareness on how you need to achieve your goals and be aware of the things that you need to do in order to achieve those goals and to not procrastinate. So it can be defined as the ability to do things um, <clears throat> that need to be done. So even if you don't want to do it, it needs to be done because you aren't going to be successful and you aren't going to be happy if you don't do it. The second kind of uh, definition that I found was the ability to train and control one's own thoughts and actions. It is super important to be self-aware and understand that you have control of your own thoughts and actions and nobody else can influence that if you don't let them. Thirdly, the ability to control one's feelings and desires. To be able to control your own emotions and your own wants in life is amazing, it's very powerful to realize that it's all on you. So where do we account, encounter self-discipline in our everyday lives? Well, this morning, personally, I encountered it when I woke up at 4.30. I did not want to, but I knew that if I didn't wake up at 4.30 and come here and practice this talk, I wouldn't be at the level of success that I desire, and I wouldn't be happy with myself. Restraint is another area that we encounter this. I restrained yesterday from eating the cookie because I ha at lunch because I have personal uh, goals for my own health. Endurance. I know when I went for a run yesterday, it really sucked at first because my body was like, oh, please stop, please stop. But my mind, I knew that I could control that. So I put in my headphones, I put on my favorite playlist, and I rocked that run because I knew that at the end of it, even though I went through um, emotional discomfort, I would be happy that I did it. Thinking before acting, this is a huge in self-discipline. If you do not have the awareness that you need to think before you act, it can be very dangerous for yourself and your future. Um, understanding that you need to control and ab absorb information before reacting will lead you down to the path of su success. Finishing what you started is also a very big component and it plays into self-discipline because I know all of you guys have projects that you want to get to and you want to do at home and you um, have these things that you've started, but where do you find the time? It's very hard and stressful to be an IRE student, but the payoffs are wonderful. So finishing what you started is a great um, area of self-discipline. The ability to carry out decisions despite your ob obstacles, that is where you can control your own actions and your own SMART goals to follow through with what you put into your head. This is where you start your beginning with the end in mind and you go through the obstacles even though you don't want to. 
So what is the science behind self-discipline? Well, really, self-discipline is a muscle. So the more you use your self-discipline muscle, the more you practice the techniques to gain self-discipline, you will be better at it. And you rub off on people amazingly, it's awesome. So the strong, there's a strong connection between self-discipline and happiness. Generally, people who are very happy, they have a lot of self-control, self-awareness, and self-discipline. It's just a fact. They also, um, discipline muscles are strengthened through exercising the self-discipline principles again, and we'll get into those here. So there are multiple ways to practice strengthening that muscle. You can increase your stress level tolerance. How do you do this? How do you manage? We have PSYOPs, we have four competencies, we have PBL credits, we have projects, we have all of these things that we are required to be attentive and um, there for. So how do you increase your stress level? Well, you can eat healthy choices. It's amazing. If you decide today at lunch, you I'm stressed out, I really wanna to go to McDonald's, I really just wanna pig out because I feel like it will make me feel better, please restrain from that. Eat something healthy, have a good meal. Your mind will be transformed versus if you were to have that meal from an unhealthy restaurant. Meditation, meditation is huge in self-discipline. Um, there are multiple ways to meditate. I know that I'm sure most of our crowd thought, oh, um, okay, yes, you can but you can also take long walks. You can also just sit in peace and quiet. You can read, you can listen to audiobooks. Find what helps your mind escape from all of the stresses in life. Figure out where your happy place is, and that is truly meditation. And relax in it every day, even if it's for 20 minutes. Just relax your mind and meditate. Remove your distractions. When you are doing homework and you are working on developing your professional, technical, and design skills. Remove your distractions. Turn off all of the tabs that you do not require or are not required for your uh, task at hand. Put your cell phone on silent mode. Even maybe turn off the notifications because it's easy just to click that button and see who texts you. Um, put your orange cone at your door. Really recognize when you are doing your work what action or what distractions are causing you to be on not self-disciplined, not self-disciplined. Break your bad habits, use your SMART goals. Um, I personally have a bad habit if I go home and do homework and I sit on the couch, I turn the TV on. But if I sit at my kitchen table, there's no TV on. I don't know why, I just do. So when I went home yesterday, I was like, oh, if I sit on the couch, I'm not gonna know what I'm going, I'm not gonna be focused, I'm not gonna be prepared for tomorrow. So I sat at the kitchen table and the TV did not come on. Break your bad habits, use your SMART goals, they're wonderful. Tolerate emotional discomfort. Just because you don't wanna do it, or oh, I just, it makes me sweat, I don't like speaking in front of people, um, just do it. You'll be so happy and proud of yourself. You will grow, you only grow from your discomforts and your learnings, so really embrace the struggle and learn how to tolerate your discomforts. Establish powerful habits. Um, Louis is a, was a wonderful, wonderful talker. He has gone through IRE for seven, eight semesters, like he said, and he has learned how to establish powerful habits. Um, it really is something, a powerful habit would be um, maybe meditating every day in the morning, 20 minutes, exercising every morning for 30 minutes, really establishing what allows you to be self-disciplined and what causes you to have success and happiness. So what do we get out of self-discipline? Uh, there's lots of different benefits, but again, coming back to the beginning, I think the two biggest benefits are success and happiness. Without self-discipline, you cannot achieve your goals. You cannot go above and beyond. You cannot set good examples without self-discipline. Um, so really please try to implement these practices and be self-aware, have self-control, and research it. The more you learn about something, the better you become at it. So what did we learn today? We learned a description of self-discipline. Although there are many, it really comes down to self-control. Um, the happy, or excuse me, the mindset of self-discipline and recognizing when you are lacking it. 
Next, we learned uh, where it appears in our everyday life. It is always around us, always. So you have to wake up on time, you have to be at your classes on time, you have to turn in your homework on time. It plays into almost every aspect of your life. We learned the science behind it. It's a muscle, so keep using it. Um, practice, 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 gain feedback on how you're doing. And the more you use it, the more it becomes a strong essence of yourself. And how are we rewarded? Happiness, success, and although it's taking me, oh boy, you know, four and a half years at college, and yesterday I felt like I was really rewarded and successful, that's okay, because instant gratification is not always the most important in life. So please restrain from your instant gratification and do what you know is best. Have that awareness and really hound in on how you can be a self-disciplined individual so that you can be successful and you can find happiness. Thank you.